Hey guys, welcome back to another one. This is Crypto Elite, home to the number one Theta community. And if you like this content, please like and subscribe to the channel. And you can find me on Theta TV as well. All right, guys, in today's video, we are going to talk about Stranger Things. So the release for season four, part two, was released on July 1st, so today at the time of this recording, and it crashed Netflix. So we'll kind of dig into that, and then once again, wrap this around how Theta could be that knight in shining armor and kind of help out with situations like this. So let's get into it. Stranger Things Part 2 premiere causes Netflix to crash. And it happened, you know, the very first day, um, it, you know, the day's about halfway over now, and this article is already coming out. So the part two premiere of Stranger Things season four caused Netflix to crash, as subscribers reported. Um, you know, the last part uh, was all of May, which was pretty awesome as well. I still have to watch part four, or season four, part two, um, but, it only includes two episodes and so these two episodes were enough uh, enough demand enough subscribers tuned in at the same time and caused you know uh, Netflix to crash which is very very interesting uh, and not only that you know stranger things actually for Netflix has been a huge demand uh, driver uh, it is the one of the most you know popular shows on Netflix overall so it is understandable uh, stranger things for volume one pulled um, over you know 159 million viewing hours in its second full week which is humongous um, and it becomes the first uh, English speaking uh, language TV series on Netflix uh, to make that all timeless. Uh, so it's eclipsing Bridgerton, which I haven't watched yet, but apparently that's a you know super huge one as well. Um, so with a monster 335 million hours viewed in the first full week, uh, Stranger Things season four, volume one, uh, quickly rose to become a superstar for Netflix. Uh, so this is still not the most uh, popular one. The the most popular one was Squid Games, uh, which had over 1.65 billion hours viewed. But Squid Games actually never, you know, caused Netflix to crash. And I don't know if that's because it was viral and it's not quite like how Stranger Things everyone knew, uh, you know, season four, episode one is coming out on this day and it is, you know, something that you don't want to miss. Squid Games, it's kind of, you know, word of mouth. You heard it from a buddy, you heard it from a coworker, like, hey, come check this out. So I think the demand slowly but steadily ramped up. So I think that's kind of the differences there. Um, but I still think it's very interesting. And I did find another article on, you know, why Netflix, aside from today, has been extremely successful on not crashing. So we'll kind of dig into that. I think The Verge, they did a very good article. So a look under the hood of the most successful streaming service on the planet. Uh, and in this article, I mean, it kind of does talk about Netflix traditionally has not gone down. And, you know, you can't say the same for Disney Plus. You can't say the same for HBO Max. You can't say the same for, you know, all those other streaming services that are extremely busy. Um, so Netflix, you know, I, I will give them props for that. And this is why they, why that happens. Um, so Netflix has spent 10 years building an expansive server network called Open Connect. And we'll check out Open Connect here in a second as well. This is something I had no clue. So they have their own, you know, CDN basically. They don't, uh, they don't rely on Akamai and Fastly and the other uh, traditional CDN methods. They constructed their own, which is very, very interesting. Um, so that's one of the reasons why Netflix is the leader of the market. Um, it's the technical part, and that's Open Connect. Um, so how many times has Netflix had a problem with their streaming service over the last 10 years? I found that quote to be a little funny and ironic because they did today. But overall, if you think about it, no, Netflix has done pretty darn good. So if you look under the hood of Open Connect, it's something that started in 2012 uh, and it gives internet service providers physical appliances that allow them to localize traffic and these appliances, they store copies of Netflix content only, uh, which is very, very interesting. And it creates less strain on the networks by eliminating the number of channels that content has to pass through to reach to its users to play. Um, so if you think of your traditional servers like Akamai, you know, 
if you're watching something on YouTube or Google or you know what have you, just browsing on Amazon, all of that data is going through Akamai. But if you're watching a video through Netflix, Akamai, they might have, or the service provider, they might have this um, open connect device, which only plays Netflix media, which is very, very interesting. And that has helped them out. Uh, they download three different bit rates, as you can see here. So if there is a lot of demand, if there's a lot of traffic, you might not get that highest quality. You might get a lower tier or the lowest tier if it's extremely busy. Um, but that is another way that they work around this. So while most third party CDNs do multiple jobs and manage multiple requests from many companies, uh, Netflix internal CDN it does that exact one job, which is very, very interesting. And that is kind of why it works. Um, so kind of like I just said, Netflix uh, effectively ships three copies of each of its titles to its servers with different levels of quality. So if your internet service provider is overwhelmed or your internet momentarily kicks out, the system can swap to a lower bitrate version of the title which helps maintain the stream without interruption. So that is, you know, very similar things to what Theta is doing, but Netflix is going kind of above and beyond with their technology, Open Connect. So I won't necessarily go through this entire article. It kind of nerds out a little bit more uh, as to what that Verge article said. And this is the basic setup of how Netflix has been able to, you know, get got around uh, never going down um, which is very very interesting but it all boils down to money and as we know the subscriber count for Netflix is going down and Netflix has to continue to create new content to bring in more people so if we check out the investor relations all the answers is always here um, so the quarterly uh, most quarterly um, <clears throat> excuse me, most recent quarterly report, we can see that the Open Connect, it is, you know, over time, over quarters. So here's March 31st of 2021 and March 31st of 2022. Even though it is still the same percentage of the revenue, that number is going up. So before it was $3.8 billion, now it's $4.2 billion. And I don't know how much directly that has to do with Open Connect and, you know, maintaining that infrastructure and growing that infrastructure. But, you know, whenever these companies and if we start heading into a recession and people start uh, cutting the cord or cutting these subscriptions, then this is something that will start to add up in very, very quickly. Another place we can see it is in the annual report. Once again, uh, this is 2019, 2020, and 2021 were the most recent annual reports. Although the percentage of the revenue is going down, uh, that number is still increasing. So here's 12 billion, 15 billion, 17 billion. And the decrease in cost of revenues as a percentage of revenues from 61% to 58% is primarily due to delays in content releases due to COVID-19 pandemic. So because they weren't able to create as much content, that is one reason they were able to cut costs. The other reason they could cut costs in the future, and of course, I'm finally circling it to Theta, but of course, Theta. Um, Netflix does a great job, as I just learned, of creating their own content delivery network. But if they could just tap into a content delivery network that is kind of already there, and it has, as of February 2022, the Edge Network has grown to over 130,000 nodes, covering the entire world, that is something that they could spend their money not on having to focus on their uh, service provider and become a content delivery network, but they can focus that money on more content to bring in more users. That's just my take on it. What do you guys think of that? Uh, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you on the next one.